right now to wrap up the SBA, we are going to now look at the statement of findings. The statement of findings. Let me share my screen again. All right, so your statement of findings. So you're going to, again, you're going to use the labels as they are outlined on the syllabus. So after you have completed your analysis, after you've completed your, your interpretation of data, you outline three of the things that you found in your research, right? And you clearly outline them in its own unique, specific, designated section. So statement of findings, and you give me three statements, right? So you found that 50% of the respondents said that they were unaware of contraceptive methods. You found that 80% of boys said that they did not like to use contraceptives. Then you can say, 100% of the respondents who were 30%, 30 years, 30% 30 and older. So you can say that all of the respondents that were 30 years and older, so 100% of respondents were like, can be, well, it can be a separate thing. So you can say all respondents 30 years and older said that they were aware of contraceptive methods and used those contraceptive methods. So you'll essentially go back to your presentation of data or even your analysis of data and just copy and paste three findings. So you're going to extract three findings from your analysis of data. You can even go to your presentation of data and copy and paste something that you found that is relevant. You must have three of your own findings, right, under this heading. And then you have recommendations and implementation strategies. This section, I find students, I guess because you're so close to finishing the SBA, they just rush through it. Recommendations and implementation strategy. You must have two recommendations and one implementation strategy. A lot of people like to recommend, but don't like to say how this recommendation will actually work. So you can say, for example, I'm using the, the teenage pregnancy example because that's what this student's social issue was. So you can say that based on your findings, so say you found that young girls were not comfortable with 50% of young girls were unaware of the contraceptive methods available to them. You can recommend that uh, these young girls are made aware of contraceptive methods through the use of uh, social media. So you can coordinate active, well, let me not do that. So you need to raise awareness, right? So your recommendation would be to raise awareness or disseminate information to, to young people, to teenagers, particularly females, about contraceptive methods that are available to them. So that is one recommendation. Another recommendation can be to try to change the stigma associated with uh, teenage pregnancy. So if it is that young girls decided that, all right, they're going to, they're not going to further. Say your research, let me use statistics. Say your research found that 60% of teenage girls said they chose to discontinue their education because of social stigma. So basically they decided not to go back to school because they were embarrassed about walking around with their pregnant belly. So you can say that 60% of females 
responded that they chose to discontinue their education because of social stigma. As a result of this, you can try to influence perceptions of pregnant teenagers by having public service announcements that encourage the, the, the nation to encourage citizens to not chastise young people if they are to become pregnant, but to encourage them, to encourage them to further their education, right? To, to, to try to positively influence them. You can let them know that, you know, it's not over for you. You can let them know that, uh, you know, education is important and you have to stick to it even though it's going to be hard and it will be in the best interest of your child. So those can be the recommendations, right? But your implementation strategy is how are you going to do it? So you can say you are going to partner with government agencies. You're going to choose What's the name of that group? There is an organization that, all right, you can find out the name of the organization. It's for example's sake, but I want to make it as specific as possible so you understand what I'm saying. So for example, to, to implement the recommendations, so you can tell me what you think should happen. So you're going to raise awareness, right? about contraceptive methods, and you are going to try to change the public perception of young females who are who become pregnant, now the implementation strategy. How are you going to put these recommendations into effect? That's the implementation strategy. So you can say you're going to partner with, a, with an organization that uh, focuses on women's rights or Women's, women's health concerns or organizations that are designed to assist the pregnant um, mothers, teenage pregnant mothers. So you're going to partner with a particular organization to run campaigns, right? To run um, information campaigns on social media, on the radio, well, social media and radio, all of that is media, but on social media platforms such as WhatsApp or Instagram or, or Snapchat. So you're going to run campaigns or information sessions on these social media platforms. You're also going to use the radio to, to further share this information, something to that effect. You have to give me details as to how this how these recommendations are going to work. It has to be practical. So you can tell me how to fix the problem with the two recommendations, but you have to tell me how. So an actual strategy to fix the problem is what you're going to need to do. And then we have here writing skills. So after you've put all of this information together, proofread your, your, your research paper. So excellence organization, make sure you have paragraphs, use of language, spelling, and grammar. So proofread your, your information, your research paper, and ensure that you have removed all spelling, grammatical errors, and it's, it's properly organized. So you use your transitional phrases like in addition to, in conclusion, firstly, secondly, thirdly, things that make it flow and easy to read. That's what you will have to do to get the, the four marks. And then the last four marks or the additional four marks will come from ensuring that you have your acknowledgements, your table of contents, your cover page, your appendices, and your bibliography. Remember that if you only have your one questionnaire, it's not an appendices, it's the appendix, right? So it's one thing, appendix, more than one, appendices. So if you have your questionnaire and something else, you label it appendices. If you only have your questionnaire there, 
you label it appendix. Right? Um, your bibliography, let me touch on that um, in a bit. So you have your bibliography, and then this is where you cite your sources. Let me leave it alone. Just put what CXC says. So your bibliography, you clearly outlined your, your bibliography. So you're going to give me the sources of your information, right? And uh, there goes that. What I wanted to say to you is that really, it should be referred to as references because you are going to cite the sources that you included throughout your, 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 your research paper. So you're supposed to label that section references if you're going to be using APA. And we're not going to get into that in the video, but I'll run through that with you in class. But the, the heading really should be references and not bibliography, because it's not just a source of books that you use, it's the sources of books that you use or the sources that you use, which include books. It also includes websites and you are ensuring that this people, the information that you would have used, you would have acknowledged their ideas and input. So you're going to take something that somebody else wrote. You are going to make mention of that in your references because you cited them in your research paper, so you have to give them credit on your references list. Right, but we'll look at that later, and I'll explain that to you further. But if you have your acknowledgments, your table of contents, your bibliography, your cover page, and your appendices, you would have had four marks for that. So just having proper grammar and having these components, you would have had eight marks. Right? So I hope this video is as useful as I think it is. So try to ensure that you have your SBA out as you go through the video so you can make your adjustments. All right. All the best.